Incredible news has recently spread across the internet. NASA has discovered evidence of a parallel universe. But is this actually the truth? Well, there is a grain of truth in this story, but it's not that simple. Let's consider it. Perhaps you've seen the articles that said, NASA has finally found a parallel universe. This story was widely publicized, and people got divided into two camps. Those who took this news at face value, and those who considered it all complete nonsense. But both sides aren't exactly right. Let's start from the beginning. The discovery was made by NASA's ANITA. This name stands for the Antarctic Impulsive Transient Antenna. Yeah. It was designed to study neutrinos. Neutrinos are high-energy cosmic particles. They're incredibly small, lack any charge, and have almost no mass. Trillions of such particles pass through our bodies every second, and we don't even notice them. All because they almost don't affect ordinary matter. That's how insignificant they are. On average, in our entire life, each of us gets affected by a maximum of one neutrino. So basically, hunting neutrinos is like hunting ghosts. To catch them, you would have to send a whole stream of these particles through a giant piece of lead, and it has to be trillions of miles thick. At the same time, you have a 50-50 chance that you'll stop one of them. Therefore, in order to detect them, scientists had to come up with some clever tricks. We know that neutrinos, like other similar particles, come to us from outer space. Ooh. They travel to Earth from the Sun, stars, and even from the Big Bang itself. Some of them come to us from particularly big sources, such as black holes, supernova, pulsars, and even from various unidentified objects. Some of these particles have particularly high energy. And for scientists, these neutrinos are the most interesting ones. But oddly enough, most high-energy neutrinos don't actually come to us from afar. They form right here, next to Earth. This process has a cute name, particle shower. Well, this is how you can explain it in simple words. A granny particle gets into Earth's atmosphere. Usually, it's a particle with very high energy. Then, it generates several children that have less energy. Each of them then makes more grandchildren, whose energy is even less than theirs, and so on, until we have a giant family tree of low-energy particles. In the end, there may be billions of them. During this process, piles of neutrinos are created. Then, they begin to sink deep into our Earth. During their journey through the planet, they touch the upper layers of its crust, or ice. For example, Antarctica's ice. When faced with all these obstacles, they create radio pulses. And as you might have guessed, these are the exact radio pulses that scientists are trying to find. It may be a surprise to you, but Antarctica is pretty deserted, you think? And that's why it's the best place to study microscopic particles, which usually can barely be traced. There won't be any interference or anything like that. We can catch these pulses with the help of powerful antennas. NASA places these antennas on balloons that can rise as much as 20 miles above Earth's surface. That's how they've been tracking these neutrinos for the past years. All right, now we know what Anita is doing. But what about that parallel universe stuff? Nah, don't worry, we're getting there. In 2018, Anita began receiving abnormal radio signals that caused quite a stir in the scientific community. Remember how neutrinos come to us from outer space and then gradually sink deep into our planet? So recently, Anita has discovered neutrinos that didn't descend from space as usual, but rather rose up from Earth. In other words, these particles, called tau neutrinos, basically travel back in time. But how is this possible? Scientists began to research them. At first, they thought that maybe it was a detector error or an error in interpreting the data. But no, everything was correct. Something very exotic was happening. If so, then first we must try to find a simple explanation. What if these tau neutrinos just came to Antarctica from some other source? Maybe they came to Earth from the other side and somehow passed through the boundary. To test this theory, scientists decided to seek help from another cool neutrino observatory called Ice Cube. Yes, very cool! This observatory is located near the South Pole. It consists of 5,160 optical detectors buried in ice, 
and all these powerful detectors are designed to detect neutrinos. Anita researchers were like, hey guys, we found some strange radio signals. Could you please check where they come from? No problem, Ice Cube replied and started the research. And as a result, they found nothing. Yep, Ice Cube didn't detect any signal sources at all. It turned out that these strange particles had basically appeared out of nowhere. How could this be? Scientists tested many different theories, but none of them could explain the situation accurately. Later, Ice Cube published an article which basically said, nope, we have no idea where these signals came from and how to explain them in terms of the standard model of the universe. Oh, now it's getting interesting. So what on earth are these signals? Having exhausted normal explanations, scientists began to consider ideas that go beyond our understanding. One of them said that perhaps these particles had come to us from a parallel universe where time flows in the opposite direction. This crazy-sounding theory is the result of the famous multiverse theory. According to it, about 14 billion years ago, when the Big Bang happened, two twin universes were born. One of them was ours, and the other was a parallel one. And they're almost identical in everything, except for some things. For example, time in this parallel universe doesn't move in the same way as it does in ours. It moves backward. Besides, everything there would look upside down to us, as if we're looking in a mirror. Therefore, scientists call it the antiverse, and believe it could be filled with antimatter. And even though all this may seem strange and crazy to us, for those who live in that antiverse, their way of life would be quite normal. In fact, they would rather find us, the strange ones. So these mysterious neutrinos could be born in this antiverse. Let's say they somehow existed there and then accidentally got into our world, where we were able to detect them. The idea of the multiverse itself is really incredible. If it's true, then it may mean that there is an infinite number of realities, many of which are much better than ours. Quantum mechanics even says that it's quite possible that every second of every day, any of your decisions divides the universe into two. And so there are quintillions of parallel universes where our lives have gone very differently. Something like this is hard to even imagine. Of course, it would be great if we could find a way to get into another universe, and if these mysterious tau neutrino particles were able to cross the boundaries of two worlds, well, maybe we can do that too? But unfortunately, this phenomenon alone isn't enough to say whether the multiverse theory is true or not. This is just one of several possible options. At this stage of human development, we cannot prove or disprove this theory. Maybe someday in the future, we'll find out the truth, but definitely not now. The only thing we can say now, after this discovery, is that we've found strange radio signals which standard physics can't explain. So we need to move in this direction and study them to learn more about this incredible phenomenon. But people like to dream about space, so no wonder we've gotten so excited about this. And it would be great if one day it turned out that this theory was actually true. The theory of parallel universes has been popular in various movies and books for a very long time. Where would you go if you found out that you could travel between realities? Me? I'd look for a different reality of ice cream. <laughs>
People who know you well will quickly distinguish you from your doppelgangers. Of course, there are people in the world with striking similarities. They can live on different sides of the planet and speak different languages, but their faces are almost identical. If you meet someone like that, you can have fun and prank your friends. But what if such a double wants to have your life? There are many movies on this topic. What if some guy or girl replaces you or wants to frame you? So be careful when you meet a doppelganger. Don't trust them until you're sure they're a good person. Okay, the second type of double is more complicated. To understand who they are, let's first understand the quantum world. First, you need to know that the quantum world is impossible to understand. Accept it and still try to figure this out. A quantum is the smallest particle of anything, a parameter that cannot be divided. All things are made of molecules, and all molecules are made of atoms, neutrons, and electrons. Light consists of photons. So electrons, neutrons, protons, and photons are all quanta because nothing can be smaller than them. The strange thing about these quanta is their unusual behavior. They can be in different places and nowhere at the same time. Our universe, like these quanta, can possibly exist in various forms. Yes, it sounds too difficult. In general, the main idea of this quantum world is that the laws of physics work differently there. For example, two entangled photons have a strong connection with each other. You stimulate one photon with a small energy charge, and it rotates. Another photon entangled with it will also rotate, but in the opposite direction. If you put these photons in different rooms, they will also react to each other. But the strangest thing is that when you put one photon on your desk and another one on the opposite end of the universe, they still remain connected. As soon as the photon on the table spins, the photon in the depths of space will do the same thing at that exact moment. The reaction rate between photons is much faster than the speed of light, and nothing in the universe can be faster than the speed of light, right? So how do they work? It seems like photons don't know what space is. This phenomenon is called quantum entanglement, and that's just one of the many incredible things. The rules of the quantum world constantly violate the fundamental laws of physics. Scientists observing quantum particles noticed that there was some other energy in this world invisible to us. We call it dark matter. It may be the reason for the strange behavior of quantum particles. Some experts believe that parallel universes are hidden inside this dark matter. So if you see your double from one of these parallel universes, the consequences can be unpredictable. They may come from a universe identical to ours or something completely different. Perhaps in one of the parallel worlds, the DNA of the first bacteria on the planet could have been arranged in such a way that giant cockroaches or octopuses were born instead of humans. In any case, meeting such a double might surprise both of you. And all this would mean that a rift has occurred between the universes and one world can connect with another. What if these worlds start overlapping, leading to a collapse of universes? You might feel lucky to meet your double, but imposing one universe on another could result in the fusion of your bodies. Your double will merge with your body and you'll have four legs and arms, as well as two heads. You would unite at the molecular level into one humanoid mass. The scale of the disaster could become unpredictable. Just imagine these two worlds overlapping double roofs on houses, cars with eight wheels, two-headed dogs, and millions of other molecular anomalies. There's only room for one universe in one universe. The appearance of the third type of double will mean not the end of the world, but the end of your conventional idea about our universe. So think again about how entangled photons work. If one particle is on Earth and the other is at the end of the galaxy, they're connected and their reaction speed is instantaneous. It seems like there's no concept of space for them and it's inexplicable to us. Do you know in which world particles can behave like these photons? A virtual one. If you take 100 gigabytes of a video game and start to disassemble it, then sooner or later, you'll reach the tiniest particle of information that cannot be divided a bite. Now imagine a giant map of this game. 
the law of speed set for the players of this world remains unchanged. A character or item can't move faster than the developer allows. But there are no rules for bytes, kilobytes, and other bits of information because all this giant cosmic virtual reality works inside a tiny computer processor. You may have already guessed what kind of double we're discussing now. The development of artificial intelligence and virtual reality is happening at such a speed that in the next 50 years, we may be able to create a virtual world populated by creatures with intelligence like ordinary people. We will set the parameters of this intelligence so that all the game characters will think they live in the real world. You will create a hero who will be outwardly the same as you. People inhabiting this universe will build civilizations, develop their technologies, and create their own video games. And then, one day, you'll decide to contact your double and tell them their world is a virtual simulation. You'll tell them that inside this game world, bytes can interact with one another at any virtual distance. But from our perspective, as the creators of this world, bytes work inside a small gaming processor. It's like our quantum entanglement. Photons inside our giant universe are just inside another more advanced processor. And now imagine that you meet a double of the third kind, and they tell you that our world, planet Earth, and the entire boundless universe are all a simulation within another world, and that world is very different from ours. The difference between the two universes is the same as between megabytes and molecules. These concepts exist on entirely different planes. With this version of events, our laws of physics are just lines in the program code invented by a talented programmer. This knowledge will lead to existential shock, but some people won't care. And the most remarkable thing is that according to this logic, the other world above us can also be a simulation of another world, and your doubles will also exist there. In this sense, the universe will not be parallel they will be very different from each other. The higher the level, the more complex the world is. But the question is, would you like to know this or continue to live your life? Now, sure, science and technology will continue to evolve, but there are some inventions we just have to forget about. Not because we don't have the resources for them, but simply because they are physically impossible. On that note, let's talk about human teleportation, a cool concept you may have seen in the movies. Quantum teleportation has been demonstrated in labs, where scientists have managed to create a connection between entangled photons over long distances. But let's be real, it's a far cry from teleporting an entire human being. Plus, the teleportation in the Star Trek universe, for instance, involves something called destructive copying, which means the original person gets obliterated. Ouch! So even if teleportation were somehow possible, it would be basically like stepping into an annihilation machine. On top of that, the sheer physical and energy requirements for teleportation are mind-boggling. Just imagine a system that can instantly scan, record, and transmit every single bit of information that makes up a human body. And then, it has to compile that person at the destination without even slightly messing up a single molecule. It's a whole lot easier to send someone a PDF. So as much as teleportation sounds awesome, it's not something we can realistically achieve. The technology and energy needed for such a feat are way beyond our current capabilities. Maybe someday in the future, but for now, teleporting ourselves from one place to another remains firmly in the realm of science fiction. And so, mass transportation needn't be worried about becoming obsolete. Human teleportation isn't the only thing on our impossible things list. Let's dive into the concept of time travel, too. Thanks to the genius of Albert Einstein, we've come to realize that time travel is actually a thing, at least technically. Einstein's theories propose the existence of these nifty things called wormholes, which could connect different parts of space and time. In other words, they might just be the key to creating a legit time machine. Now, here comes the tricky part. According to some super smart physicists, if we ever want to build a time machine, we'd have to figure out a way to harness the energy of an entire star or a massive black hole. And that's not all. There's an even bigger challenge. 
We'd also need to stabilize the wormhole and make sure that the entrance, or the place where we step into the wormhole, stays open for our return trip. Because, let's face it, nobody wants to go back in time only to find themselves stuck there forever. Unless you could buy Apple stock right at the beginning. (laughs) Imagine this. We've all seen those cool spaceships in movies that have these awesome protective layers, right? Well, it's not completely out of the question that someday our spaceships could have a similar setup. They could be surrounded by a special layer made of charged plasma or a super strong electromagnetic force. Now here's where things get a bit tricky. When it comes to personal force fields, it's a whole different story. You see, a force field's main job is to either soak up or bounce back a whole lot of energy coming at it. In order to do that, it has to push out with an equal or even stronger force to stop the energy from getting through. Now, if we're talking about a force field just for one person, things get a bit more complicated. The only cosmic force that could potentially work for a personal force field is electromagnetism. But here's the thing. Electromagnetic force only works on charged objects. And guess what? Humans are electrically neutral, which means we don't have a charge to play with. So even if we somehow manage to create a gadget that could envelop a person in a mighty force field, there's no guarantee that the person inside wouldn't get zapped. Making the force field work in all directions would be a real challenge. So while it's a super cool idea to have our own personal force field, it's not as easy as it sounds. Physics and our electrically neutral bodies make it quite the uphill battle. Meanwhile, will we ever be able to upload our minds into supercomputers? Well, not really. Because here's the thing, we can't transfer our consciousness. Most methods of uploading focus on copying our brain's basic information onto a digital platform. But what happens to our consciousness when we're suddenly in two places at once? You end up with a bunch of identical copies of your mind, albeit digital, each one claiming to be the real deal. They're all equally genuine, too. As with human teleportation, does this mean the original will need to be destroyed? Hard to tell at this point. This conundrum is what the specialists call the continuity of consciousness problem, and is causing quite a stir in the philosophical, neuroscientific, and AI communities. Big topic at parties. The thing is, we're still in the dark about the nature of consciousness. We don't have a solid scientific explanation for it yet, so we're stuck in a guessing game. Even if we can't figure out the whole consciousness thing, the idea of uploading our minds is still pretty mind-blowing, though. Just imagine being able to exist in a digital realm, living out all sorts of wild experiences without the limitations of our physical bodies. It's like stepping into a whole new world, or through the looking glass. Of course, there are plenty of ethical considerations to ponder. What happens to our sense of self? Will we still feel like us in the digital realm? And what about the copies? Are they just as valid as the original? It's definitely a complex web of questions that might never have definitive answers. There are some things that will never happen, unfortunately, even when it comes to space travel. Sure, it can be a mind-boggling experience, especially when it comes to the whole idea of zero gravity. It's something that many people tend to overlook or misunderstand. The truth is, you can never fully escape the clutches of gravity, no matter where you are in the vast expanse of the universe. However, there's still a way to achieve that weightless sensation we often associate with being in space. Now, even in the depths of space, various gravitational forces are at play, exerted by celestial bodies like the moon, the sun, and the countless stars out there. But here's the thing. If you can match your acceleration with your surroundings, you can create the illusion of floating. This is precisely why astronauts undergo specific training. A unique aircraft takes a dive into freefall, giving them a taste of weightlessness for a brief period of time. Now picture this, being weightless, completely free from the pull of gravity. It's an experience like no other, and those who have had the pleasure describe it as utterly surreal. In a so-called zero-g environment, It's impossible to distinguish between floating and actually plummeting towards the Earth when you close your eyes. That's why aircraft training plays a crucial role in preparing astronauts for the real deal. Now, don't get me wrong, I totally appreciate all the theories about space colonization. 
But let's get real here. We're not going to be cruising through space on a gigantic interstellar vessel anytime soon. You know those generation ships they talk about? Well, it's a pretty cool concept, but let's break it down in a more down-to-earth way. The idea behind these generation ships is to create a self-sustaining miniature version of Earth that can support a group of brave space explorers on their long journey to another solar system. Here's the catch, though. The distances between solar systems are mind-bogglingly vast, and that poses a major challenge. We're talking about some serious logistical problems when it comes to resources and materials on a ship that has to sustain an entire colony. We obviously can't afford to be wasteful on a mission like that. That's where the concept of suspended animation swoops in. What this means is that we'll have to freeze everyone up for the journey. Just until they reach the desired destination, of course. This also covers the problem of raising a family on a starship. The odds of someone agreeing to spend generations upon generations hurtling through space are pretty low. However, even if suspended animation sounds like a better solution, we are still far from figuring out how to maintain people in that state for longer periods of time. For the time being, tests have only shown this might work for mere minutes.